Hi everybody, this is your maths lesson, recorded maths lesson for Monday the 4th of May. Now this week we're going to be looking a bit at World War II. Um, you come to study it properly in year 6, but because it's VE day this week, which we'll tell you about in the live lesson, we thought it would be a great opportunity to link our maths work this week, which we don't normally do. So this week we're going to be looking at different puzzles and code breaking, uh, which was a big part of World War II and probably one of the main reasons why the Allies, the, the British, Americans and all the other Allied countries, why eventually they won the war. Um, there was a lot of maths involved um, that went on quietly in secret behind the scenes. Um, many of actually the mathematicians that they'd employed were actually women, but, but there were men there too. And there were many different people that um, are, are now famous and are very, uh, very important in the history of this country because of all the maths work they did. It wasn't just soldiers out on the battlefield. The war was won with quite a lot of maths. So maths for this week is, is going to be, as I said, on, on some puzzles and some code breaking. Today we're going to be looking at multiplication pyramids. Um, now, multiplication pyramids weren't exactly used in World War II for any reason, but they're a really good place to start. Um, and it involves some careful thinking and using both um, um, multiplication and division, which is obviously the opposite of multiplication, to work out the answers. So, um, for today, you will need to be thinking about multiplying about using your times tables knowledge, but also place value for, for multiplying bigger numbers. We could write down calculations and work out bigger numbers, but sometimes it's just as easy to split up numbers, which I'll show you in a minute. So times tables and place value for multiplying. And also for dividing, you'll be needing um, Times tables again, because obviously um, dividing is just the opposite of multiplying and also recalling how to use that bus stop, bus stop method. So that's going to be our learning for today and you'll need all four of these things. Well, two of them are the same. OK, let's have a look at the first multiplication pyramid. You can see why it's called a pyramid now, because it's shaped a bit like a pyramid, even though my boxes are not particularly even. So the easiest level is when you have three numbers at the bottom. And you have to work out what the numbers above are. And to do that, you literally times the two numbers that are next to each other together. And that gives you the answer. So 2 times 5 is 10. And on this side, 5 times 7 is 35. And to work out the top number, you just multiply these two numbers that are next to each other. And that gives you the top answer. And as we know from our place value knowledge, we don't need to do any complicated written things. We just do 35 times 10. It just gets 10 times bigger. It becomes 350. So that is the basic level of multiplication pyramid. Um, and when you work in target your maths, there are a couple at that level, but it does get a bit harder. So we're going to move on to some harder ones now. So the next level, um, which is a slightly harder a multiplication pyramid, is when you have one of the bottom numbers missing. So you're not really sure what to times four by and what, what should go there. But you start where there's a connection between the numbers. So here you can see there's a 16 above. So whatever, eight times whatever has to make 16. Well, we know that eight times two is 16. So now we can do this side. We do four times two is eight. And then we have to work out 8 times 16. And this is where place value comes in. So to do 8 times 16, I'm going to split up 16. And I'm going to make that into 10 and 6. And then I'm going to do 8 times 10 and 8 times 6. I know that's 80. And I know that 6, 8 are 48. And then we can just simply add that together, and that is 128. So I know that the top number is 128. Okay, just go back to this beginning bit, remember what I did. I didn't know what this number was, but I knew that what the connection was between 8 and 16. 8 times 2 is 16. So that's the next level. So I've just shown you something that's very similar to this one. 
So I'd like you to have a look at that multiplication pyramid and try and work out how you fill in these missing numbers. Always start lower down if you can. Try and look at the numbers to help you. Have a go, press pause and then have a listen in afterwards. Okay, have you tried it? So we need to look at number five because we've got a number above to help us, that's our clue. So if something times five is 20, well we know that that's four. And then we can simply fill it in. Three times four is 12. And then 12 times 20, well, what we can do here, we can cover up the zero, do two times 12, which is 24, add the zero back on, which is 240. So that's the next level. Okay, here's the next level. You can see now the pyramid's got an extra layer. There are four numbers at the bottom, then three, then two, and then one. Okay, and as you can see, there are more gaps and more puzzles to work out. Now, at the moment, I've only got two on the bottom, and two isn't close enough. I can't use two with seven because the num to get to seven, it's this here. Okay, so at the moment, I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to look up here because 14 looks a little bit easier. So, seven, this means that I've got to times these two numbers together to get 14. So I know that seven times two is 14. Now I've got that two, I can also link that two to the 16. Two times something is 16. Two times eight is 16. So now I can come down to here. You see how we work it out? We don't always start at the bottom. So two times four makes eight. Can you see that? Two times four makes eight, because that's the number in between. And now here, what do I do here? The, I've got to times two by something to equal two. It must be one to keep it the same. Two times one is two. And here, one times something has got to make seven. So that must be seven. And then the only one left to do is the one at the top. Well, 14 times 16, uh, I could do a written multiplication method, but I think it would take me a while. So I'm just going to pretend, let's keep that as 14 and let's change that to 10 and 6. So let's do 14 times 10 and 14 times 6. So that one's nice and easy. It's just 140, we'll make it 10 times bigger. 14 times 6 still looks quite hard, so I'm going to do 14 times 10, sorry, 6 times 10, and six times four. So I know that that's 60. Six times 10 is 60, and six times four is 24. So I know when I add those up that 14 times six is 84. And now all I have to do is add those two numbers together. Four, eight add four is 12. One, add nothing, add the one is 124. So I know that that top number up here, 14 times 16, is 124. Okay, so that's the next level that you see. It took me a bit longer. There was a bit more working out. There are different ways to do this, but this is the way where you can use your place value and your times table knowledge all in one go. So um, just based on the example I did before, I'd like you to have a go at this one. So have a think about how the numbers link, where you should start. You can't start at the bottom. So have a think about where the two numbers are closest together and what you can do with that. Press pause, have a go, and then I'll explain. Okay, so as you've probably, hopefully seen, these two numbers are close to each other. So we know we can work with them. We know we can do three times something is 18. But you'll know that 3 times 6 is 18, so we can put the 6 in there. And now we've got that one, we can do other things. So we could go to this one next, so we know we've got a 6 and a 2. 2 times something is 6, that must be 3. And 3 times something has got to equal 3. Can you see that? So 3 times 1 must be 3. And then over here, we can't do this one number yet because we don't know what goes in there so let's leave that a minute but we can work out this one 
because we know it's got to equal 60. It's got to be 6 times something equals 60. So 6 times 10 is 60. And now we need to get to 10. So 2 times something equals 10. 2 times 5 equals 10. And then all we've got left to do is this calculation up here. And again, we can separate the 18 or the 60 to make it work. So I think I'm going to do 18 times 6. Because then, after I've done 18 times 6, I can just make the answer 10 times bigger by putting a 0 on. So to do 18 times 6, I'm going to split that into 10 again and 8. So 6 times 10 is 60, and 6 times 8 is 48. And when I add those up, 60 and 40 is 100, so I know that's 108. But it was 60, so all I do with 108, when I put it up here, is add, that, is add the 0 on because I've made it 10 times bigger. So, there we go. Sorry, in the wrong place. There we go, 1,080, because I added on that zero to make it 10 times bigger. And there we go. That's the next level. There's one more level to show you, and then I'm going to leave it up to you. <clears throat> okay, so the harder level, which is a question from question C, actually, section C, actually, in Target Your Maths, is even trickier. So have a look, and we'll go through it. So here's this harder level, okay? So for this one, um, we've got a link straight away here, the 30. So we can do six times something is 30. Six times five is 30. Can you see how important your times tables are? Okay, so six times five is 30. We can also do this one. We can do four times five, well that's 20. Now what should we do? There was a few things we could do um, let's have a look at this one. We've got 240 as an answer, and we need to do 20 times something is 240. Okay, there are different ways you can work that out, but we're going to have try a bus stop method. So we're going to divide 240 by 20. So you put the big number in the bus shelter, and this is the number 20 bus, and we're going to divide it into this number. So how many times does 20 fit into 2? It doesn't. So you carry the 2 and it becomes 24. How many times does 20 fit into 24? Once, remained a 4. 4 pieces left over. How many times does 20 fit into 40? 20, 40 fits in twice. So now we know that 240 divided by 20 is 12. And the reason we had to divide is because we didn't know the question. We knew the answer and we knew one part of the question. So if we weren't sure what to multiply, then you take the bigger number and divide it by the smaller number and it gives you the other smaller number. 12 times 20 is 240. Okay, now we can do this one here. 4 times 3 is 12. There we go, there's that triangle. Can you see this just makes triangles each time of numbers? In the Target Your Maths book, it's a lot neater than mine, so you won't have a problem seeing these. The next thing we would need to work out is this one. Well, we know, let's take the zeros off a minute, we know that 2 times 3 is 6. And we just need to make it 10 times 10 bigger, so 100 times bigger. Well, that's 600. Now, the biggest calculation is this one. There are different ways we can do this. 240 times 600 sounds like a lot. But again, we can use our times table knowledge. Let's take off one zero from each side. So now we've got 24 times 60. Well, I'm going to do down here, I'm going to do 24 times 6, because I know I can make it 10 times bigger in a minute. So 24 times 6, I'm going to break that down into 20 and 4, 6, times 20, well 6 times 2 is 12, so 6 times 20 must be 120. 6 times 4 is 24. 120 at 24 is 144. So 
So I know that 24 times 6 is 144, but we actually needed 60. So let's put the zero on and the zero on there. So, so far we've got 1,440. But as we know, we took another zero off this side and another zero off this side. So we need to put the 10 times 10 back on. 10 times 10. So that's the number. It's 144,000. So 240 times 600 is 144,000. Okay, from here, um, it says on Firefly exactly what to do. You find the right page in Target Your Maths. It's all there explained for you. I want to have a go at the questions. Um, and on Tuesday, I'll post the answers. Don't forget on Wednesday, we've got that session where you can just join in just by yourself and ask me anything you want to. and We can go through it.